Hi guys, Gabriel from Real Path Hacks here. Today I have another Real Path SAP BAPI rated video, and right from the beginning I want to give credit to where it's due. The inspiration for this video came from my friend Loris Slaminelli, who brought this up for discussion, and the solution came with the help of Stefan Schnell. If you are doing SAP related stuff in Real Path and you have a Real Path form account, then you must have heard about Stefan. He's one of the most experienced SAP developers turned RPA developers. He also has his own website and I've put that in the description below if you want to check it out. So today we will look at RFC read table or how we can get data directly from SAP in our UiPath automation with the help of invoke SAP BAPI activity. So what is the RFC read table? It is an RFM, a remote enabled function module. RFMs are quite similar with BAPIs. Same, same, but different. I'm no ABAP expert, but I understand there are some differences in the way they treat exceptions. Uh, BAPI sends error messages like BAPI read 2, for example, and we have seen that in some previous videos. While RFMs are throwing exceptions, and BAPI usually does not commit the work. And if you have seen my previous BAPI videos, we were always at the end calling the BAPI transaction commit. But in UI path, BAPIs and RFMs seem to share the same activity, invoke SAP BAPI. Now let's go through the code. I have prepared an example here where we are going to return some data about purchase orders from the table ECPO. In the beginning, I have some multiple assigns. I'm assigning the application server address, system number, client ID, and client. I'm getting the user name and password from the asset. And then I start to prepare the tables. So let's see what kind of tables do we need when we're calling RFC read table. We have here the query table as string. And we put here the name of the SAP table we want to get the data from. In our case, it's ECPO. This contains the purchase order item level information. And then we have three other data tables as in out arguments, data, fields, and options. Now data is where we will get the result or the out argument. And then we have fields and options to prepare. And then we can also set the delimiter. Uh, that's if we have more fields that we want to return, like what is the PO item, PO number, um, description of the item and so on then we can have a delimiter between them to be able to later on parse this um, more easily. But let's look at the fields and options tables. We are preparing here the table for options and I have a data table and the column name is text. And then I'm assigning here a row. And for the first test, we say I want to return all the purchase order items in this plant, in the plant 1710. And after that, we are preparing the fields. So this is what we want to be returned. And this table should have a column name called field name, string. And here we can have different or several rows. For each column, basically, from the SAP table we want returned, we need to add a row here. And I have here a balloon, so this is the PO number. Then we have EBELP, this is the PO item number. And we are also returning here TXZ01, and this is the description of the item. And if you look in SAP, we can go to SE16N, we have the table, ECPO, and we have here the technical names of the fields. A balloon for purchasing document, item and we have somewhere the description takes z01 and if we run this let's scroll down a bit and put our plant maybe more results 
this should be the results. So we have about 4,000 hits. And we said we want to get the purchasing document number, the item, and the short text as well. So after preparing the options and the fields, we have our SAP application scope activity, and then the RFC read table, the invoke sub BAP activity. We have seen the parameters here. And at the end, we um, are going to basically save the return data table, the data data table that is going to be returned by the BAPI call here. This has several rows, basically, one for each item. And we are concatenating them in a long string and then displaying the string. So that's the code. We can run it. And there it is. Uh, we have here the result. So basically we have here the PO number, the PO item, and we notice it has the internal representation with five digits rather than just the one. And then we have here the description of the item and then new line and then uh, the next item and so on. So these are the, the results returned. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that um, this data is limited to 512 characters per line. So it means if we go to our SAP table and we would like to return here all these columns, I'm quite sure that we will go over the 512 characters and we would have then an exception. And we can try it out. We can say uh, we want to take the DT fields out of here. So basically it means return all the columns. We try to run it. And we get a data buffer exceeded exception, meaning that we went over the 512 characters that the table could maintain per line. So that's why it's important to um, decide and to have some fields that we want to return rather than say return all the columns of the table and I see later on what I need. Now, how do we enter more criteria? So the fields, the table is clear. We put here one row per column that we want to be returned. But how can we play more with the options? So we have here uh, a simple expression. We say we want all the PO line items from plant 1710. But what if we want to return the items from two plants? We can say then this is the first plant and we say um, or works equals, let's say, another plant, 10, 10. So apparently we have to take care of the spaces here. Right, and it worked. And these are the results. It should include results from the second plant as well. All right, now what if we wanted to, let's say, um, return only the first two items of the POs. You can see here, and a belt equals or and a belt between, let's say, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0002. Let's try this out. And here it is, and we should have only items from 1 to 2 and no other items. All right, let's see um, what if we want to check the table and make sure we don't have any items which have the deletion indicator, for example. So we have the technical name L-O-E-K-Z. We can say here and you know a get set equals space so it means it's blank let's run this right so we should have no items which have the deletion indicator set and we can also use variables here so let's say we want to return the plant and say um, and we want to return only the PO line items from the last year. So we can say, and let's see the date. 
So we have a changed on. Let's use this date, AE dot. We say AE dot, let's say uh, greater than, and then we have date time, now add years. We say minus one. So basically it's now minus one year. And we make it to string. We make a string out of it. And it's important to put the format here. We say year and then month and then day. And we concatenate at the end a quotation here. And that should be it. Let's write out. Here it is. And we should have here only the PO items which were created in the last year. Now, before we conclude, there are some limitations um, to this, and I've already mentioned some of them. We have the 512 characters limit on the data out table. And um, to overcome that, I think the only way is to create a Z program, a Z RFC table, where we replace this limitation. But there's also one exception that we can have sometimes that's a sign based wrong alignment when we have some columns of type float. And apparently the solution there is to use the alternative called BBP RFC table. It's very similar to the RFC table um, from the usage point of view, it's identical, I would say. And apparently this float column type issue is solved there. So if you ever get this assign base wrong alignment exception, just try to use BBP RF series table instead of the RF series table RFM. And that was it. We have seen how we can use the RFC read table remote enable function module to get data from SAP tables, how to select the columns we are interested in and how to filter through the results. I hope this will come in handy for your SAP related implementations. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel to be informed of future uploads. Thank you for watching and have a great day.